Jessica Skinner. Um, I started my company as a small business uh, in March of this year, so I'm just on my own, just doing consulting work. And uh, I've been involved in the Air Force community um, for 21 and a half years here at Bright Path, and actually 36 years because my husband was in the Air Force. Um, I'm Courtney Carlisle. I am uh, the new operations manager for the Air Force. Again, I'm Larry Lincoln, so I'm with a small startup, and like it says, it prepares you for Shark Tank and no more innovation offerings. So I'm Rob Williams. Um, I actually was at AFRL and retired last year. I ran uh, a Discovery Lab STEM lab that's in the place where the maker cup is now. Um, um, so we're now Discovery Lab Global because we're reaching students where and ideas wherever they happen to be. And so it's a year round internship. Not Freshmen are over again, a uh, head start, and then connect them with the follow on opportunities to tell them to go to the entrepreneur. Jim Heitner, I'm the head of tech transfer and commercialization for the Wright Brothers Institute. Um, I moved up here fairly recently from the Southeast. Um, I've been and have built several internship based programs around commercialization, mostly in the university, uh, sort of incubators. Um, I'm kind of interested in doing the same thing. Jeff Grayley from Mile 2, um, co-founder, we're a software as a service company. Uh, Tom Mitchell, I'm here from Proto Bill Bar. Um, it's my first meeting, so I'm just kind of here checking everything out. <laughs> uh, if I can get some interns to kind of get them into the tech uh, along with customer service thing, I think that's a great thing for especially engineers to have here. Yeah. We've been in Proto Bill. Yeah? yeah? Thank you. Uh, I want to go back to school so I can be your intern. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get my new employees at your place. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm Linda Avalos with Ava Home Staging. I know it doesn't sound tech, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> and I'm also here representing H7 Connect. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's a huge networking group in Cincinnati and Dayton. And it's a group of small businesses, and we're always looking for connections. So I attend these types of things. What was the name of the H7 Connect. H7 Connect. H7 Connect. They have meetings, and it's just small business owners and, um, you know, other people that need to, like, mortgage loan officers and things, the bigger corporations that need to build their own family. But we connect and share information and share contacts and Share information on interns and things like that. Good afternoon, I'm Maggie Varga. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Sochi for the Southwestern Ohio Council for Higher Education. So I'm here with Alex today. Hello, I'm Cheryl Kent. CECS stands for the College of Engineering and Computer Science, and I'm with Bright State University. Hi, I'm Kelsey O'Rourke. I am the Assistant Director of Employer Relations at the University of Maine. And I'm Alex Cluzo, I'm a Program Manager with Sochi or the Southwestern Ohio Council for Higher Education. And I'll quickly go through how that kind of fits in the internship um, field, and then I'll turn it over uh, to Kelsey and Cheryl, who can share um, both of what their schools are doing, also a little bit about employer outreach. So I have some information on that, I'll skim through it, because they have focused a little more time on that. And then, uh, right, and then Rob's gonna, um, Rob and I will both present um, our, our internship program. So, I know I have to get Cheryl out of here, so we've, we've kind of moved the schedule around and allow that to happen. So, what we are, what SOCHI is, we're actually a consortium of 23, we just added University of Cincinnati, um, colleges and universities, both two and four year programs. Um, and originally, our biggest thing is to try to increase collaboration between all of those um, entities. So we do. This is a little dated, but we do a economic study of everything. Um, this only includes, this doesn't include all 23 um, of the universities, because now we're at 188,000 um, students as of this summer. Um, got that number this morning. So uh, we're a little larger with students. Um, 
and the internship number annually has obviously grown since this. Um, we're trying to get to 20,000 by 2020 um, in the Dayton region. So uh, we, we keep track of that with the help of our schools and say who's registering as um, internships and the employers who helped um, connect to those schools. Uh, the vision and mission, ed, um, educated, employed, and engaged citizens. Uh, we're really trying to ensure that in any way possible our, um, our college students are graduating and very involved in their um, area. We do a lot of uh, trying to connect uh, students with where they are. We're trying to get rid of the whole brain drain. And people come to UD, to all of our great colleges and universities, and then leave as soon as possible. Really trying to get rid of that whole stigma. Um, our mission's right there, I won't read it to you, but uh, we try to link all of the uh, university functions, you'll see in a second, we do a lot of committees, um, and we hold a couple conferences to try to break down what was traditionally very siloed aspects of universities, and having them work together, um, and maybe get assistance from other universities, learn best practices if uh, they aren't necessarily as a whole team throughout the university. Um, so we're really trying to uh, increase the collaboration. Um, a lot of these universities are great at working together, something we don't see in every region. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of help, a lot of best practices, and uh, a lot of referrals um, between, well, I don't have this major, you should talk to these people. A lot of working between um, the schools are very, uh, very happy to kind of pass uh, and reference it along to each other. So all of our councils and committees, obviously career services is kind of going to be the focus of ours today. Uh, we have quite a few, um, as well as professional development uh, conferences that we hold throughout the year. So internship advocacy, that has certainly come through the career services um, council. Um, a big part of what we do is trying to just get people aware. I think the awareness is no longer such an issue that interns are important in fact of needing to have them in business is a great way to grow businesses. Um, but really trying to connect different pieces and people together in the region to ensure that the internship can grow to this 20,000 number we have put by 2020. Um, so MVP kind of came out of that. That will be discussed by Kelsey. Um, posting jobs, really allowing you to access all of the universities in this region without having to just call each of the career services. Even though they're all great people, it can become a little bit of a challenge to try to contact all. 20 to 23 of them um, for one job posting or a couple job postings. Um, and then I will be focusing on the, kind of the adopt the program, the turnkey program, social internship program um, towards the end. So I'm sure all three of us will touch on this, but why hire interns? This was kind of the, the plug to get everyone here. Um, four out of five college internships turn into full time jobs, um, or 56%, four out of 10 find their jobs through their internships. That's the only way. So if you're not having internships or at least contacting um, and interacting in a co-op in, uh, co internship or reaching out to students before they're graduating, you're actually missing 40% of the potential uh, workforce. And normally they're the best and brightest, they're the cream of the crop. So, you know, skimming off the top 40% only access and I don't want to call them the lower 60%, the other 60% of the, uh, the workforce graduating college certainly can be disadvantaged to your company. Um, turnover, obviously a huge issue, uh, having interns that then become your employee greatly reduces intern uh, turnover, not intern turnover, full employee turnover, and with benefits and different things like that, um, becoming much more expensive for companies, it can be a huge deal to have to constantly retrain and go through all of the um, compliance issues with hiring new people. I mean, quite frankly, the obvious one I think everyone sees is a test drive for an employee. It's a really great opportunity to see uh, the talent out there if it works. And if it doesn't work, um, obviously we wish all internships have a 100% success rate, but if they don't, there's certainly a lot easier ways to get rid of employees than having to do um, with that once they're a full-time employee, because that can become a little sticky. Um, and inspiring the best thinkers, whether that's the interns coming in and helping your best thinkers, kind of providing a new inspiration, some new ideas, or really being able to push the, bright, the next generation of bright thinkers um, coming into your organization and being able to to help um, foster their education in a way they probably couldn't get in the classroom. So a couple numbers, these are referring to the 2015 graduate class. So 65% of students in the 2015 class have had some kind of internship before they graduate with their four-year degree. Um, that number is growing every year. 
Um, we haven't gotten the 2016 numbers from um, NACE yet. NACE hasn't come out with those numbers yet, but it is expected to grow. Um, and 60% of employers surveyed also said that they expect or have a, a large preference towards their students um, or their employees having some kind of internship experience. So obviously if the employers want them and the students are now seeing that they need them, we need to kind of um, constantly be providing those internships uh, so it's beneficial for both ends. And the internship satisfaction, um, I'll talk about in a second, but it really leads towards is that intern able to be converted into a full-time um, full employee? And that has kind of two aspects. One is the type of work they're doing as an intern. Is it meaningful work? Or is it just a kind of a filing, a much more task-oriented job? That normally results in really low satisfaction from the employee and actually the employer because it, you know, it, it, it's too much work to just bring on an intern, do everything required for an intern, just have someone file paperwork for you. Um, and Something that also really affects, and I think kind of obviously, if the if a, a student takes an internship in their non-desired field of study, obviously their their internship um, is going to suffer, and potentially the relationships and employees. So really making sure that you're having that proper engagement with the interns that it's something they want to do before you hire them to really result in a, um, a high impact internship for both parties. And just a few best practices that really tie into that. Um, enjoyment or satisfaction. Uh, ensuring the work is meaningful. Um, you know, filing a lot of clerical work. Students always say the clerical work. And then communication work is the second lowest, like, beneficial or rewarding tasks that they do. Um, students that have to do over 50% of that are much less likely to, to, to want to uh, talk about the business that they work with a, a good life. Um, you know, the internship, some, some, as much as we try to make the internship a very easy process to gain access to interns, um, treating that hiring process, the interview and the resume review and everything as seriously as you would a full-time employee is extremely important. It ensures that you're getting the interns you need. Um, and it also sets the tone for the whole internship for the students that they're expecting to be a professional, um, very professional with their organization. And uh, something that I'm sure will be talked about later, but ensuring that you know the academic requirements of the students, not just their workload and when it's exam week, not having work 40 hours a week, um, but also allowing them and uh, helping with any paperwork you needed to register in that internship, which helps us register the 20 for 20 challenge, but also um, helps with employer relations for each of the universities. And then finally, incorporate interns into the team. Just having the intern sit in the corner, not having a steady place for them to work, not bringing them into the team meetings um, really doesn't do anyone um, any good. It's, it hurts the intern, they don't feel part of the team, but also you're kind of preventing that uh, spread of new ideas or current educational trends being pushed in your business. You kind of lose that um, connection. <coughs> so services that we offer on Sochi, we have the degree finder, which is a great way for you to figure out which universities you do need to contact if you're looking for specific majors, um, certificates, things like that. You can learn which of the local colleges have that. We're always uh, trying to add the new colleges and things like that to this. So as we add members, um, we can add this. But it's a great place to get started if you don't know who to contact. And then MVP, which is where I will hand it off to Kelsey. Uh, or no, Cheryl, sorry. But Kelsey, we'll talk about MVP. Um, it, uh, in, increasing the collaboration. All of these universities have a great <coughs> Um, and have signed on to this MVP program. So instead of you having to register with all of these different universities um, online if you want to post a job online, you can register at the MVP site, create your account, and then you select which majors or types of students you're looking for, and the jobs are then pushed to those different universities. Um, so a really good way to access large amounts of students without having to do as much legwork as with one stuff. So with that, I will pass it over to Cheryl to talk about Wright State. Um, Granny Bear Career Center, and a little bit of what I skimmed over. And we, there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end, so if I said anything, to just jot it down, but I'm trying to be aware of some people's time. So. Thank you. so I have my business card, if you'd like to take one and pass it around, and I'll just grab my extras over here by Alex. Um, again, my name is Cheryl Kent, I'm director of the Brain and Career Development Center, I'm with the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Wright State University.
University. That is UD. <laughs> Tomorrow we are having a corporate partner open house for our students. Our corporate partner open house is a way for us to showcase. Right now we have 12 corporate partners. They've either donated to the college through scholarships or directly to the Brandenburg Career Development Center. And so instead of having a whole other career fair, this is just a small group um, where the students can go and meet one-on-one -on -one with these employers and talk to them. Um, but it's very low key because the university has a career fair which is well over 100 employers that attend. So this is very specific to the College of Engineering. And you all are welcome to stop by tomorrow. It's from 10 to 1. Um, again, we have 12 corporate partners that will be showcased at this event. Um, I do have an employer coming on campus today to help me with resume critiques to prepare for the students for tomorrow. And so that's one way to help build your brand on campus. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I try to always work collaboratively with employers. And if you have new ideas of how you'd like to build your brand on campus, um, there's a lot of opportunities and um, employer students really like having a resume critiqued by the professionals, by people who are recruiting them versus me. So, <coughs> so um, we're here today to talk about co-ops and internships, and as Alex mentioned, it's a winning investment both for students and the employers. For the student, it gets them an opportunity to gain experience to build their resume. So when these freshmen are coming in and seeing me, I'm like, we got to show them how you have experience. We reach back to their high school days for any volunteerism or leadership. As they develop in the college years, we encourage them to continue the volunteerism and the leadership, but also to gain valuable work experience related to their major. So co-op and internship allows them to do that and get paid pretty well at the same time. Um, the student gets to kind of see what it means to work in their chosen field, to kind of do a reality check. Do I really want to be an electrical engineer? Um, and it's also an opportunity for them to test drive. So maybe I want to be an electrical engineer, but do I want to work in sensors, embedded software? What area, what technologies do I want to explore? So this gives the student the opportunity to test drive, but employers also get an opportunity to test drive as well. Um, so this is a way for them to develop and evaluate new talent. Many of employers use an internship program or co-op program as a pipeline to uh, building their workforce. Um, many of the employers, um, get the benefit of a co-op student because most of them are anywhere between $10 and $15 an hour. If you're going for a graduate student, it might be $20 an hour, but they can do some of these skills that you've been having your, your executive who's making $50 an hour do when you can pass maybe some of the lower um, tasks off to the co-op or intern. But this also gives you the opportunity to work with the university. If there are certain technologies or ideas or theories that you're implying, implementing in your organization, you can work with the faculty at Wright State and help build the curriculum. Um, before I move forward, just for clarification, Wright State um, uses the term co-op and internship very loosely. Um, I tend to say um, um, experiential learning or experience um, related to your major. So when an employer contacts me and they say, do you have an internship program? I'm say, yes. If you call me and say, do you have a co-op program? I will say yes, because I have students who are ready to work for you. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So co-op and internship made easy. Um, so there are some schools and institutions, for example, University of Cincinnati, that have a very rigid co-op program where students go to school for a semester, they go to work at, with a company for a semester and alternate back and forth. Um, some companies really like that, and so Wright State will support that but we also support the parallel program, so I'll talk about that here in a minute. So we try to make co-op and internship very easy for employers because we're really trying to work more with the small and medium-sized companies. Um, so pretty much you just need some kind of position, job description, just like you're hiring a brand new employee. Um, interview and hire candidates. So you post the position with the institution, we help you find relevant candidates, you look at the resumes, you interview them over the phone, via Skype, in person, however you want to interview. Hire them, onboard them. Many employers onboard them just like they would onboard an employee. Um, you wouldn't treat them any differently. Um, give them orientation, talk to them about your expectations. Um, it's a good thing to have a supervisor for all student interns and maybe another person to mentor them. So maybe have two different contacts within your organization to work with. And if your organization is small, that supervisor or mentor might be the same person. Um, and then most importantly, at the end of each term, evaluate their performance, just like you would a new employee. Um, average salary for an engineering. So again, I'm representing the College of Engineering. Average salary is about $15 an hour for someone in the College of Engineering.
College of Engineering and Computer Science. Um, even though I'm representing the College of Engineering, if you're interested in hiring a communication student or a marketing student or any other major, let me be the front door to Wright State and help you navigate those waters instead of you getting transferred multiple times. Just, you've got my business card, call me and I'll be happy to assist you with whatever um, discipline you're seeking. Um, so, parallel and alternating. From parallel, most of our students at Wright State go to school full time and they work almost full time. Now that Obama has his Obamacare, anything over 28 hours is considered full time and requires health insurance. Many of our students are working up to 28 hours a week plus doing a full time course load. I was thinking that they were working anywhere between 10 and 15 hours and then I started evaluating um, our statistics during the last two years in the Brandenberry Center and most of them are working anywhere between 20 and 28 hours a week plus going to school. Uh, most of the students at Wright State are paying for their school either out of their pocket or through financial aid. Um, it's a very um, steady working class there. Um, alternating is, as I mentioned, the University of Cincinnati, they alternate full time one semester and then back to the um, school and then back and forth. Um, many companies that I work with, they feel that if they're going to put um, effort into hiring an intern, they want the student to dedicate at least one full semester with them. And then after that semester, many employers will be flexible and allow them to do more of a parallel program. So, um, for example, uh, Moto Man, um, which is located over by Austin Landing, has developed an amazing internship program. But their requirement is, is if any student wants to work with them, you have to give up a whole semester and work for them full time. And then after that, you can come back full time during the summers, full time during breaks, part time during the academic year, but you owe them one full semester just to get onboarded. Because it takes a lot of work for an employer to onboard a student and get them trained and ready to work. Um, and usually after that first semester, that student would go back to school and you're onboarding a whole new student and starting over. So we're trying to keep you from starting over and start developing that student. So as far as employer responsibilities, the biggest thing is just letting the university know about your opportunity and interviewing the candidates and hiring them. Again, just like you would um, a full-time or part-time employee. Uh, many schools have an internship agreement form. This is just a form saying that you're not going to make the student fetch coffee, um, that you are going to be providing them tasks related to their major. Um, and um, one of the things in the agreement form is if you're running into any trouble, you're agreeing that you'll contact the university and be like, the student's not really working out. So just making you realize that the university is an advocate for you and a liaison between you and that student. Uh, provide quality learning, work experience, and then at the end of each semester, we do have a very quick appraisal that we ask employers to complete. And this is just like what you would do for a, a brand new employee. So if you have your own evaluation system, we welcome that as well. But the student just needs some feedback on how well they're performing. Students, real quickly, the students are expected to abide by your expectations. So if you're open from 8 to 5 and the intern's working full time from you, they're not coming in at 10 o'clock. They're coming in at 8 o'clock. So they need to abide by your expectations. At Wright State, I asked the student in the College of Engineering and Computer Science to develop three to five learning objectives. This would just be like goals. So if a student um, works for a company and all of a sudden they come to me and they're like, Cheryl, I really like this company, but it's getting kind of dry. We can go back to these learning objectives and maybe it talks about job shadowing in a different department. I'm like, look, have you done this yet? And if they say no, then they can talk to their supervisor and say, hey, you know, at the beginning of the semester we created these goals. Can we start exploring maybe goals three, four, and five now to kind of liven up the internship? So it's an opportunity for them to kind of grow. Um, in midterm check-in, I always want students to check in with me to let me know if things are going really well or not so well. Or, you know what, I, I don't want to tell the employer, but I, I, I'm overwhelmed with classes right now. I really like working for them, but I, I just can't pass my classes and work for them. So, Midterm check-in is a good thing because I don't want to find out about those kind of problems at the exit interview at the end of the semester. Sure, the, <clears throat> there's three or five template learning objectives, aren't there? You, it, that, I keep it very open. I don't have any templates. Well, you, you I just let it. the students create a goal on their own with their site supervisor. Keep in mind, this is just all voluntary at Wright State. Um, so before I talk about this real quick, so when I say voluntary at Wright State, students have the opportunity to earn credit hours through co-op and internship, um, through technical electives and general electives. But if you were like me, if you transferred schools, there's only so many general electives you need, um, and then you're just earning unnecessary credit hours. So Wright State allows students to register their uh, co-op or internship for credit hours if they need it. And if they don't need it, they can register for a zero credit hour course and it's formally recognized on their transcript. So 
we don't have a lot of rigid out outlines and things like that because we're just encouraging the students to register so we can quantify with the state and reach the 20 by 20 numbers. Um, real quickly, initiatives. Um, for employers, right now, um, Wright State University and the University of Dayton and uh, many of the associate schools are participating in what's called Ohio Means Internships and Co-ops. This money is from the um, Ohio uh, licensing or the um, casino licensing fees. Um, so for all the casinos that have opened up in Ohio and that are trying to maintain their license, um, th that money goes towards co-op and internship. Um, Wright State is trying to stimulate the growth of new co-op programs with your organization. So any new co-op student that you hire or intern that you hire, you can be reimbursed up to 50% of the salary. So not pulling off a pay less as logo, but BOGO, buy one, get one free. So um, if you want one intern, I'll give you two for the price of one. So, so um, just some feedback on this. I found this first, filled it all out, and step nine of 10 is what's the intern's name. So at so, Wright State, you can fill it out to see if you're eligible, and once you hire an intern, then you'll get re you can't get reimbursed for the money until they've worked. Correct, but it did, they didn't automatically refer me to you. They just said, "Hey, nice. Uh, it looks like you probably qualify. Once you find an intern, let me know." And I was like, "Okay, there's one more thing on my plate that I need to do." Just for, there's it would have been a lot easier. They would have just sent it to you or your office right. and said, "Hey." All right, he's, he's approved. Like, now he needs help finding an right. intern. Well, now you found me, and I will provide feedback will to the Central you. Career Office. So the University at Wright State um, has a University Career Services Office, and then there's several auxiliary offices. So you have the Brandenberry Center and the College of Engineering. Um, Raj Schoen College of Business has a center, and then now Liberal Arts has their Student Success Center. So um, many of the auxiliary offices are here to work with the companies and build your brand and help you find those interns. And that information doesn't always disseminate, so I will work on that for you. What are some of the criteria for um, so, the students must be employed in Ohio, um, so their internship must be in Ohio, and the company must be within kind of the STEM field. Um, so if your company is within um, one of these different, um, I forget what they call it, the um, NASIC, NASIC, yeah, it's like a NASIC code. If your company falls within a NASIC code um, that's identified as an in-demand job in Ohio, then all your interns would qualify. The kicker is, is the interns don't have to be STEM. Your company is doing something related to STEM, but the interns could be doing human resources, accounting, um, marketing for you, or they could be building your website or, you know, whatever. Is so. nonprofit qualified too? Or is this only for profit companies? That's a good question. I would let um, the Central Career Office make that decision. Mm -hmm. I would assume if you're affiliated in STEM that it wouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. now, I know that federal Government does not qualify because you're already using taxpayers' monies for that, and you can't recycle that. But for contractors, defense contractors, they do qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we have worked with some nonprofits in the past because we've worked with Sochi in the past. But um, I would let the main office on campus decide that. Good question. Anybody else have questions about OMIC? So OMIC, um, we are in OMIC two right now. The RFP for three is going on, so it doesn't really concern you all, but the money should be reloaded each year from the state, so it should be an ongoing program. So I mentioned real quickly about brand recognition. I have um, Green Tree Group on campus today helping me with resume critiques to prepare for the corporate partner open house that we have tomorrow. Um, next week, or last week, I had Tara Dana on campus in my classroom to talk to students about cover letters and resumes. Um, next week, I have Soshi on campus talking about how to work a career fair and then also talking about internships in general. So um, one way I help companies build their brand besides job postings and career fairs that we're familiar with is just coming on campus and, 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 and interacting with a student, whether that be through student clubs and organizations, information tables. I have NASA coming for three days next week, and so I set up special programs where they can meet with different faculty members. They're meeting with the veteran office. They're meeting with the disability office. So if your company has a need, brainstorm with me and I will help you. I, I try not to say no. I mean, I had a company yesterday that bought tons of pizzas and just started interviewing any student that wanted to come in the door. That was Martha Grumman. So <laughs> um, my goal is to really help you build your brand on campus. There's a lot of events that you were talking about, the Hackathon, Xbox, Lego Challenge. 
They're always looking for companies to partner with them, whether you're being judges or mentors or even sponsoring the programs. So there's a lot of opportunities out there to start building your brand. Um, if you're looking for the cream of the crop, a lot of times the cream of the crop is sucked up by their sophomore, junior year. Those students um, are in high demand. They find a co-op and internship. They like the company they work for. They graduate and start working for them. So when I have a company come to me and they're like, yeah, we're looking for students with a 3.5 GPA um, that are graduating this December. I'm like, well, a lot of those students are already taken. You can kind of barter with them on salary and stuff. But the cream of the crop usually learns about your organization through their student clubs or through events on campus or through some of these um, cool challenges like the Lego Challenge and Xbox. So um, it's never too early. High school with STEM schools, you know, to just start getting out there and talking to the students. Um, we do have kind of a shark tank at Wright State. It's called Wright Venture. Um, so we are really trying to work with more startups and the entrepreneurial spirit at Wright State. So again, any ideas you might have, send them to me and I'll try to connect you with the right person. All right, I have two minutes to get to campus. Does anybody have questions? <laughs> I gave you my business card. I gave you a flyer about the um, OMIC grant, Ohio Meets Crops and Internships, and this is just a quick brochure about the Miranda Berry Center. If you don't have any questions, Kelsey will answer them as they come into your mind after I'm done, right? <laughs> So 
that intern candidate may have all the qualifications that you're looking for on paper, and you start working with them, and you can tell right away it's just not a fit, whether that's personality or for other reasons, this is a way for you to test it out before you're committing full time. It can also offer professional development opportunities to your staff. So especially in those smaller organizations where staff may not have an opportunity for mentorship or supervisory experience or project management experience, they can take on the supervision of the interns or mentor an intern or have a group of interns that are working on a project and they're the project manager. So it's offering some new opportunities for your existing employees. So the students also are coming in with expectations just as you are. So they're looking for those meaningful practical experiences, those experiences that fit with their field of interest. And they're evaluating prospective careers. So they are expecting that they're doing some of the work that your full-time staff is doing or something that's closely related so that they can evaluate, is this a long-term fit for me? Am I in the right field? They're looking to increase technical and transferable skills, so that's in both breadth and depth, um, an opportunity to broaden their professional network. Um, they're coming in wanting to know as much about your organization as possible. So while they may be located um, on the technology side, it's great exposure for them to see human resources and marketing and how everything fits together. They're looking for increasing responsibility and challenges. This is more so for co-op or students that are returning for another internship with you, but they want to know that they are getting more projects, more responsibility if they're returning to you. Since they've already been trained, they already have that experience with you. So a little bit about what makes UD unique. So University of Dayton really focuses on the education of the whole person. So learning does not only occur in the classroom, we have <coughs> lots of different opportunities. Our research institute um, has over $100 million in sponsored research projects each year. So that's a lot of hands-on experience for the students. So maybe freshman, sophomore year, they're working in the research institute, getting that hands-on experience by junior, senior year. They're coming to you with some skills. As interns, so it's not, um, they're not coming to you without having worked before. There's a strong focus on adapt adaptation and change. So, our Marianist tradition, we were founded um, in adapting to change. So, we were one of the first universities to accept women, um, and we also have this focus on community collaboration and commitment to justice and service. So, we have a strong relationship with the city of Dayton um, in addition to strong relationships across campus. So just some stats for you. So top 10 national Catholic university, 97% of our graduates are employed in graduate school or in a formal volunteer program like Peace Corps um, within six months of graduation. So we have some highly sought after graduates. Um, so if these graduates are getting snatched up within six months, um, many of them are going full time with the same organization that they interned. We have over 8,200 undergraduates from 44 states and 70 countries, so that's a wide range, um, some diverse students. And then number one Catholic university in the nation for sponsored research projects, again going back to that University of Dayton Research Institute. So some of your on-campus recruiting opportunities, we have space for on-campus interviews. Um, for local companies, this is not as appealing, especially if you want those students to see your space and get a feel for your organization before you're hiring them. But we do have space on campus, which does make it convenient for the students. We host two large career fairs each year, so one in September and one in February. And we have our next fair is next Monday, and we'll have 186 organizations attending. Um, last fall, at least 40% of our 1,300 students were interested in internship opportunities. So it's almost half of the students that are attending are looking for those internship and co-op positions while they're still in school. Two popular event opportunities that don't have a fee associated with them are information sessions and tabling. So information sessions is um, a presentation that you're putting on for students that could range from a TED Talk style event, a technology talk, it could be just information about your organization and the positions that you have open. It's really up to you. Um, 
Though I will say that those that are more technology talk, TED talk style, um, or talking about someone's career path within an organization, those are much more appealing to students than the history of your organization. Tabling is an opportunity to host a table in a high student traffic area. So one of the lobbies of our academic buildings, lots of students just walking by that may not know about your organization, you just grab them as they walk by. Um, other students, we do advertise these so they may be coming to you having uh, sought you out. Um, also have a resume review opportunities before each of the career fairs. So we had two days over the last two weeks um, where we brought employers to campus. Again, they like to hear your feedback much more than our feedback. Um, it's much more meaningful for them when it's people that are hiring giving them feedback. Um, we're also open to new events, so just like Cheryl, we don't like saying no. If there's something you want to do on campus, we want to figure out a way for you to do that. Um, so you just have to let us know what you're looking for and we'll work with you and come up with a strategic plan for that. If, if I might, using that bullet as the door to ask this question mm -hmm. under the new innovative events, right? Um, um, and, and you know, I, I, I focus primarily on college freshmen with respect to high school. So an interesting event would be one from UD that created an opportunity for high school students from across the country to learn about UD and STEM opportunities that we would like to explore with you because we're in the middle of that right now. Sure, sure, an open house type of event. Right, and, and there's ways to do that to reach um, you know Catholic high schools in Montana if there are such. No, I, I see Montana for a reason, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I just use that bullet as mm -hmm. No, that's a, that's a great point, I'm to make a note of that yeah. and see what we can come up with. So our online job posting system is called Hire Flyer. It's a CSO system, if you're familiar with that, um, which is the same system as Miami Valley Post. Um, so you can host jobs through the system, you can schedule on-campus interviews and build your schedule actually through the system. So you have the opportunity to pre-screen your applicants, um, review all of the students that have applied and handpick, these are the students that I want to interview, and then the students will choose a time through the system. So you're not having to manage the scheduling and call each student to see what time they're available. We also have our event registrations through the system. So registration for career fair, information sessions, and resume review sessions, those are all in that same system. So it's just Stop. There's also a resume book available, and you can choose, um, you could choose to pull all of the students, but what's probably most helpful is choosing specific graduation criteria, majors and degrees that you're looking for, and then you're coming away with students that you can start reaching out to. We also use this as a mailing list, so when we have information about upcoming events, such as the spring career fair that will happen in February, we use the contacts in our system um, to send that information. So it's free, so you might as well, if you're gonna have open positions or if you are interested in events, it's definitely worth setting up an account. Um, it is fairly straightforward. As you can see, the tabs at the top, the job listings, campus interviews, career events, um, but if you do have questions or issues setting up an account, feel free to let me know. So Miami Valley Post is that same um, system, that CSO system, again, it's free, it's one-stop shop, so there are uh, all of these organizations, four-year, two-year institutions. When you're posting, you're posting once, and it's going out to each of these. So we have a special inbox folder uh, in our CSO system, in our Hire Flyer system, and we see everything that's coming in uh, through Miami Valley Post. So it makes it a lot easier on you. It also shows how these organizations in the region are working together. Um, so there is that collaboration. actually a 